Welcome to class. Let's open our Bibles to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. Yes, we're going to try to cover four verses in this one class uh, setting. Can you see it? I'll hold the scripture text there and then I'll just read those four verses. Class, pay attention. Listen intently. He brought me. That's the little bride talking. The little bride to be. That's the Shulamite who loves her Solomon with all of her heart. He brought me into the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Boy, doesn't that sound secure. She cries out. It's as if this love, this intimacy is almost more than she can bear. Stay me with flagons. We'll look at that little verb to stay. It really means prop me up. I'm about to faint. Stay me with flagons. Comfort me with apples. Remember, Jesus is her apple tree. A Solomon is her apple tree. Stay me, uh, comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. That does not mean she's disgusted, class. For I am sick of love. It means, in essence, I'm love sick. I'm obsessed with my bridegroom, like we Christians are to be obsessed with our Lord Jesus. Look at verse 6. I tried to number the verses and then separate them uh, uh, clearly enough. You could read uh, his left hand is under my head and his right hand doth embrace me. Wow. Verse 7. Now, she no longer is talking about Solomon she is talking to the daughters of Jerusalem. Now, as she talks to the daughters of Jerusalem, she will, as she always does, mention her Solomon. I charge you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to make you swear. I need you to promise, oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose, those are little deer, little female deer, and by the hinds of the field, still in the deer family, the hinds of the field, that you stir not up, nor awake. Don't bother him. Don't upset him. That you stir not up, nor awake my beloved, till he please, until he is completely delighted and satisfied, until... He, please, four verses. Now, with four verses in our text, we have to move, have to move right along, but uh, let me give you what I think, class, is the gist of our text. We've read it. Now I want to talk us through the text. He brought me into... His banqueting house. Wow. The verb that is used there for brought, it's just spelled B-O in English. It's in the causative stem. It's a property of a Hebrew verb. He caused me to come into his banqueting house. He has lovingly invited me into his banqueting house. Very similar to Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open the door, I'll come into him. We'll have supper together. I'll sup with him and he with me. He brought me into the banqueting house. When Solomon built the temple... David wanted to build it. God would not allow it. David's a man of war. Solomon will be a man of peace. David shed much, much blood. Solomon, not so. 
And, and so Solomon, the man of peace, will build the temple. Watch my fingers. It took him seven years to build the temple. But when Solomon built his house, his palace there in Jerusalem, I'd show you with my fingers, but I don't have enough fingers. Thirteen years. Thirteen years in the building. So, and in that palace complex is this banqueting house. We're no longer out in the vineyard. We're no longer out where the flocks are feeding. We are now in Jerusalem. We are now in the royal palace. He brought me into his banqueting house. And I'm preaching this, teaching this. Everybody knows it by now as a picture of Christ and this church. We're the church. We're the bride. He's the bridegroom. Oh my, many a time is my Jesus. I say it with a smile on my face. Brought me into his banqueting house. Wow. And, and, and one of these days after the rapture, I'm going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He brought me into his banqueting house. Isn't that a lovely thought? Jesus said, uh, in my father's house are many mansions that beats any palace Solomon ever built. And I'm going to prepare a place. And if I go, I will come again and receive you that you may be with me where I am. He's going to bring me into the real banqueting house. Someday she's as happy as she can be. You remember how the Son of Solomon started? She said, kiss me. Kiss me. She said, she said, draw me. Just give me a signal and I'll run after you. She says, tell me where you feed your flock because I want to be there with you. Uh, uh, she says, you're the apple tree. Uh, can I lie down under your shade and enjoy the pleasant fragrances and, and taste the sweet fruit? Oh, she is pursuing him. She's hungry for her Solomon. We're to be that hungry for fellowship with our Savior. He brought me into his banqueting house. The last part of verse 4, and his banner over me was love and his banner over me was love all the way through the Pentateuch the books of Moses particularly numbers where they're traveling that word banner appears uh, it means a flag of identification his banner over me was love there is reason to believe that every tribe of the children of Israel had their emblem, logo, a banner, a flag that they flew above their camp. We have in the history of our United States military examples of when our Marines took an island or a beachhead. Oh, they'd lift up the banner. They'd lift up the flag and they would say this is our territory. Cost me a lot of bloodshed. Cost us a lot of manpower. But that's a, his banner over me is love. Oh, can I testify? One day my Jesus found me. I was lost on my way to hell. And, and the Lord Jesus loved me. And he wooed me. And through his Holy Ghost, he drew me. And through the Word of God, He illuminated my heart. I believed on Him and I got saved. And the moment I got saved, He planted His flag. He planted His banner over me. And His banner over me is love. He says, Mike Bagwell, I love you with an everlasting love. You can never do anything to cancel my love. You can never do anything to reverse my love. I, I have written your name in the lamp. I have made you a child of God. Oh, I've been born again. Hallelujah. His banner over me is love. Not was love. Is a, I personally believe the crowning attribute of our God is L-O-V-E. He is a God of love. His banner, 13 times in our Bible, that's translated his standard. 
His flag over me is love. Oh, how He loves you and me. Verse 5. By the way, that kind of love, that kind of depth, that kind of intimacy it is, uh, is uh, oh, I don't know where, it's rich. It's deep. Uh, it is in a, and I mean it in a good sense, it is exhausting. It, it will cost you. It will involve you. You'll have to give up the world. Uh, you'll have to give up, uh, but oh, it's worth it. It's what I'm leading up to verse number five. Stay me. Stay me. That little verb for stay, spelled S A M A K, Samak. It means uphold me, prop me up, establish me. Uh, this is not far off. Uh, lean me, let me lean on you. Honey, this love is so sweet. You're so precious. I don't know how much of it I can tell. They tell me the day D.L. Moody sensed the filling of the Holy Ghost. He had prayed and prayed, God, I want the right relationship with your Holy Spirit. The day God filled him with the Holy Ghost. This is Moody's testimony. He wrote it in his, in his own writings. Uh, uh, he said, the Spirit of God was poured out on me. He said, I was walking back to my room on the streets of Chicago. He said, it was so real. It was so overpowering. It, it was so magnificent. I just say, Lord, hold up. Lord, hold up. Let me get back to my room. Lord, I can't stand it out here on the street. Stay me. Oh, Lord, I need some strength. I'm going to keep on loving you. But Lord, uh, th this is, Jesus said it. The Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Her flesh. Stay me with flagons. F-L-A-G-O-N-S. Here, here's what they are. Raisin cakes. Raisin cakes. Which I don't understand that. Raisins. Dried grapes. How did this girl know about grapes? How did she know about raisin cakes? I'll tell you how. She has kept the vineyards in her family plot her brothers were lazy and put her out there. That's how she became so sun-stained, sun-spotted. And uh, statement, oh honey, I need a bite to eat. Well, how would we put it in our culture? I, I need an energy bar. I, I need. So I want to keep on loving. I want us to keep this sweet fellow. Stay me with flagons. And then here's Hebrew poetry. A parallel thought. Comfort me with apples. Comfort me with apples. Apples and uh, that uh, that word for comfort, rafad. I'm looking at it. R a p h a d. It means to spread out. Put me under your shade. Put me under your refresh. Comfort me with apples. He's the he's the apple tree of apple trees. She chose the apple tree because it's so. It, 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 it's so spacious, such a vast shade that it casts. It bears fruit, and it's good fruit, sweet fruit, healthy fruit, and uh, comfort me with apples. And the word apples, we learn, comes from a word that means to breathe, to breathe. I think it's a picture of the Holy Ghost, who is the breath of Almighty God. Honey, I'm enjoying this so much. But it's limited what I can do physically. Would you prop me up? Need some raisin cakes. I need I need some energy. And would you uh, would you give me one more one more fragrance, one more whiff of that precious apple fragrance of yours? Then she adds, "Here's why I need help. Here's why for I am sick of love. For I am sick of love. That word sick four times." In our King James Bible, I am weak. I am physically weak because of the love that we have been able to share together. But I do want to add this. And I don't always get to my printed notes to share a little nugget or two. As I expound, I just let the Holy Ghost lead me. And I draw from those notes as He brings to my mind. But, but that word, I am sick of love, three times in the Old Testament, wounded. Wounded. 
You say, now that's troublesome. His love won't wound you. Let me tell you what I think is being implied here. I love Him. We've had the sweetest time of intimate fellowship, me and my Jesus, me and my Lord. And, uh, and, and uh, oh my, it's almost more than I can handle physically. I, I, I'm almost sick uh, of this life. If I don't spend as a Christian, if I don't spend those hours in love with Him, fellowshipping with Him, dwelling with Him around the Word of God, I in my walk can be wounded. I can suffer loss. I can suffer harm. Oh, how we need to learn to love Jesus in this capacity. I am sick of love. Nothing, rep nothing negative there. She wants to keep on loving Him. She's just pleading for the strength in order to do so. I think verse 6 is very demonstrative. Listen to it if you will. His left hand is under my head. His left hand is under my head. Now see if you see this. Oh, I wish we could talk and question each other sometimes. There is security. There is peace. There is stability. By the way, his left hand, we're speaking poetically. We're speaking of Christ in the church. His left hand cannot be under her unless he's near, very near, within arms, reach near. Hey, here's an idea. Deuteronomy, underneath me are his everlasting arms. That's what we sing about it. Underneath me are his everlasting arms. Uh, his left hand is behind my head. His right hand doth embrace me. And that word embrace means to fold me in to himself. Fanny Crosby, I believe, wrote the words, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy call and the refrain, draw me nearer, nearer. Draw me nearer, precious Lord, by thy side. That's what's going on here. Have you ever felt that close to Jesus? Well, preacher, I go to Sunday school. That's not what I ask. Have you ever sensed this intimacy of communion with your Lord? And if not, I'd almost recommend you stop the lesson, get over there in the corner of the room or in your prayer closet and say, Lord, I want to taste. I want an experience like this. I, I want to feel you so near. Your left hand is under my head and your right hand is embracing me. Oh, Lord, again, draw me nearer. Nearer. Oh, blessed Savior. Now watch. After verbally, and I hope I can say this and, and do it in the right spirit, after verbally loving Him like that, after verbally expressing to Jesus, let me tell you what worship is. I mean the very word. Look it up. You don't need a Greek or Hebrew dictionary either. The word worship, Old English, worth-ship. Worth-ship. You know what that means? You're worshiping Jesus when you tell Him what He's worth to you. Worth ship. Lord, I'll tell you how worthy I consider you to be. I, I, I'll tell you what you're worth to me. I've been in your banqueting house. I've tasted of the fruit of the Spirit. I love you. And I see that banner, you've conquered me, you saved me. And I see that banner, love, everlasting, unconditional love. See, bragging on Him. Telling Him what He's worth. Lord, I love You so much. And I'm so wrapped up in this thing. I'm absolutely one verse we'll see uh, 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 later on. I'm ravished with Your love. And physically it is draining me. But Lord, I want more and more and more of Your love. Spurgeon had this little book called Sermons in Candles. And he said, if I'm red hot like a candle lit 
If I'm on fire of love for Jesus, spreading the light of Jesus everywhere, he said, it will consume you. It will cost you. The little candle is burned and is shortened. Lord, I love you. There's a physical toll, I suppose, in that love. Moses said, Lord, let me see your glory. Moses, you can't see my glory and live. Uh, you'd die if you saw me. I will show you my goodness. I will show you uh, my grace. That's where we are. After all of the, she's shown him his worth in her life. Then verse 7. Oh my, how can I put it? She has enjoyed this so much. This has been such a precious experience to her. Listen to me. Though physically she needs some strength, hear me, she doesn't want it to end. She doesn't want church to be over. She doesn't want the revival to leave, reach its last night. She doesn't want these minutes of uninterrupted fellowship to, to ever cease. That's what verse says. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. And the word charge... We've had it before. It means to give an oath, a vow, to swear. Literally means to say something seven times. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem. We've seen them before in the book. They are girls of Jerusalem. No doubt very fair-skinned. While our darling little Shulamite is sunburnt and splotched. No doubt daughters of Jerusalem never seen a full day's uh, physical work in their lives and she has worked her fingers to the bones because her lazy brothers keep her in her uh, family's vineyards. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem. But the daughters of Jerusalem are interested. The daughters of Jerusalem are hungry. The daughters of Jerusalem want to know more about this lover of the Shulamites, this Solomon of whom she speaks. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, by the rose and the hinds of the field. How did that get in there? Two kinds of animals, rows and hinds. Animals in the deer family. Let me tell you some things about the rose and the hinds. Number one, they're beautiful. Number two, they're clean animals. You can eat of the deer. It's allowed on the mosaic dietary laws. Number three, they're very graceful and beautiful animals. In addition to that, they're animals that can climb to the heights and they're sure-footed. They will not fall from the, from, the, from the heights. Oh my, she's soaring to the heights in fellowship with her Solomon. The times I've been, I've been in high places with my Savior. Uh, uh, and the rose, uh, actually the book of Proverbs helps us with the rose and the the loving hinds, the pleasant rose, but they're easily spooked. The least noise and the deer will run. You've probably seen them do it. She says, let my lover alone. Let my Jesus alone. Let my Solomon alone. We're having sweet time of communion. I don't want him spooked. I don't want him disturbed. I, I don't want him upset that ye stir not up nor awake. That's the same Hebrew verb. Stir up and awake. Don't upset him. Don't distract him. Don't divert his attention until he please. I know unbroken communion can't last forever. There's seed I must sow. There's work I must do. I must occupy till my Savior come. But don't, while it's that sweet, enjoy it. Savor it. Delight in it and don't, don't interrupt it until he please. See, all the time in the Song of Solomon, they're not together in this kind of unbroken fellowship. There's some times that a separation will occur. We'll see that in coming chapters. She says, let's don't separate, let's don't have anything interrupt this until he Play. The Lord's going to give us some of those sweet times of intimacy and then He's going to give us some problems, some trials, some burdens, some difficulties. 
It's good for me that I have been afflicted that I might better learn thy word, wrote the psalmist in summer. Don't wake my love until he please. Wow. Let's use these last few minutes. And uh, by the way, the reference underneath thee are the everlasting arms. Deuteronomy 33, 27. 33, 33, 27. A believer in his walk with the Lord cannot always instantly, immediately enter into this deep, nothing between my soul and the Savior. The uh, songwriter worded it, that kind of fellowship. Job, Job went through some battles. I don't think he understood all about it till he got to heaven. Job said this one day, Job 23, 3, Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Oh, that I knew where my Savior was, where my God was. Job couldn't find him. Now standing somewhere in the shadows, there was Jesus. But Job, could, when you found him, when you're sweetly communing with him, maybe when you're reading the Word of God, maybe when you're in your prayer closet, maybe when the Spirit breezes by in a, one of your worship services at church, cherish it. Don't upset it. Don't bother it in any way at all. Like the rose and the hinds of the field. Preacher, you said they could access the heights. Listen, Habakkuk. It's the way Habakkuk ends. H-A-B-A-K-K-U-K. -K Habakkuk, the prophet. Habakkuk 3.19. Listen, the Lord is my strength. Lord, stay me with flagons. Comfort me. Help me. Give me fortitude with thy apples. The Lord is my strength. Listen now. He will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make my feet like hinds feet. And he'll cause me to walk upon my high places. She's been in the heavenlies. I feel like I've been in some high places recording this class. Listen to Psalm 18, 33. It's not a rare Old Testament illustration. God makes my feet like hinds feet. He'll make me to walk. He setteth me rather upon my high places. And this refrain, don't wake my beloved till he please. It is here in chapter 2 verse 7. It comes up again in the Song of Solomon chapter 3 verse 5. Again in chapter 8 verse 4. It is a, it is a beautiful recurring refrain. Enjoy Jesus. Delight in Jesus. Be in love with Jesus. Don't let anything upset it until He please. I mentioned a minute ago, He brought me into His banqueting house. The reference is 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 22 and 23. Listen. Solomon's provision for one day. Here's what they cooked in Solomon's menu for one day. 30 measures of fine flour, 60 measures of meal, 10 fat oxen. That's a lot of meat. 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, 100 sheep beside the hearts, roebucks, and fallow deer, and fatted fowl. Wow. In one day, he brought me into his banqueting house. Oh, I'm enjoying this. Song of Solomon. I'm enjoying this song of songs. You know what? 1 Kings 4.32, I've got to close. Solomon, he wrote 3,000 proverbs and his songs, get this, were 1,005. He wrote 1,005 songs, but this one, the one we're studying is the superlative, the supreme, the song of of songs. Oh my, her Solomon is so great to her. The Queen of Sheba, 1 Kings, I think it's chapter 10, verse 7, said, I've come. Solomon, I came to see your riches and your wisdom. And uh, I didn't believe it. 
I didn't accept it as fact until I came. And now my eyes have seen and the half and the half 